Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Dotson and I'm an Information Technology Senior at East Tennessee State University. I will be presenting Infrastructure as a Service for my presentation for Software Engineering 2. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's define cloud computing. What is cloud computing? It's a term that seems very vague and mysterious to many people. Cloud computing is quite simple. It, all it means is that you're using someone else's computer to access resources that you need to use instead of accessing them on your own computer. So for example, accessing Google Documents or Google Gmail, that's an example of cloud computing. You're using a product that's offered through cloud computing. All of the application, the servers, and resources needed to run that application are running somewhere else. Uh, there's different types of cloud computing. Public computing means that you are contracting with the third party and they are providing you with resources that you use over the cloud that you ac access over the internet uh, private cloud is a cloud that an organization sets up for their remote locations to be able to access and use those resources a hybrid cloud is when organizations utilize aspects of the two for example your organization may have a private cloud but they also utilize office 365 products for their office software. That would be a hybrid cloud. So now let's talk about IT service models that are offered through cloud computing. Infrastructure as a Service, or IAAS, which we'll be talking about today, is the first one. Platform as a Service, or PAAS, and Software as a Service. And let me define each of these briefly. Infrastructure as a Service gives administrators control over the hardware and the networking resources that are used to control their servers and their applications. It gives administrators the ability to choose the operating system, choose the granular details of how their networking works, and gives a lot of control. Platform as a Service allows developers to access tools that can ma help manage their deployments. It helps them set up testing, and similar services. Software as a service primarily benefits end users, so services such as Google Documents, Gmail, Office 365, these are service software services that many people use, but they don't have to worry about the underlying resources that is supporting the, that software. All they care about is the software, and instead of having it on their computer, they're accessing it through a web browser. Now let's talk about the amount of control that exists within each of these three services models. So the first one, software as a service, doesn't really provide a lot of control. You're going to have access to the application and that's it, which you don't really care about whether or not you have, you know, 8 gigs of RAM dedicated to this application or not. That's not really applicable to you. And you probably, as an end user, aren't familiar with those terms. Platform as a Service allows software developers to s set up environments to run their software. It allows them to deploy their software and gives them more control over things like the operating system and some of the things that are set up in that. Infrastructure as a Service allows IT administrators to have complete control over the types of resources, the types of service and networking resources that their company has access to. Here's another model that kind of shows the scope of each different service model and the things that they focus on. Now let's talk about some of the benefits of IAAS. Cost savings is the first and primary reason why most companies look at IAAS. The cost of running a data center maintaining all of your information, keeping your hardware upgraded and up-to-date is very expensive. S servers and networking equipment can range from thousands to tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on the size and needs of your organization. And it's very costly to upgrade these. There's big upfront costs especially. And there's also the opportunity for lost potential. So you may buy a $600,000 server, but then your business in, is really only using about $300,000 worth of the productivity and potential that that server could 
could provide. And so if you're only using half of what that server can provide you, you're losing half of that other value is just sitting there. And so you're wasting that money essentially. And so if you go with a service that you pay for what you use, you won't have that issue anymore. Agility is an also another issue. Within minutes, you can have a new server run up and running. You can change, make major changes to your networking if needed, and you can move a service to a private subnet instead of a public one, and all sorts of different things. Uh, your personnel are also going to benefit from IAAS. They're going to have a one-stop shop for all of their infrastructure needs. You're going to be able to set up servers, networks, firewalls, access lists, and all of that in one location on one website. They're not going to have to worry about being knowing how to code in Cisco IOS and knowing how to manage um, this type of firewall and know all the different command line act tools for these different things. Um, it's also going to free up your personnel's time so they can focus on business IT projects that have fallen by the wayside as they are constantly trying to fight aging equipment and helping users with their issues also. It's going to allow you to have flexibility if you need to make a change, if you need to grow or shrink, you're going to be able to do that and you're not going to be tied to your physical resources that are sitting in your building. Um, you're going to have the support that the company is going to offer you. Uh, some companies may charge you extra for uh, different levels of service, but it's in their best interest to, to you know, keep their services running and supported and to ha help you as if you have issues. Also, the subscription model or as a pay as you need, pay for what you use model is a benefit. So you're only paying for what you actually use. You can pick usually in pretty fine detail what resources you choose to pay for and, and the billing is very upfront. So now let's talk about some of the downsides of IAAS. One of them is outsourced security. And this is a concern to many people who, you know, maybe if worried about highly classified documents just being stored on a random computer, who knows where. And of course, a company that offers these services is going to pride themselves in security, and they should because their client base depends on it. But that's always a risk, and it may be a reason why some people choose not to use third-party service providers. You're also going to be more highly reliant on your internet access. Say you have an application that manipulates data or processes data, and you're transferring that data back and forth to the cloud. You're going to need you're going to need high speed bandwidth, and you're going to need reliable bandwidth. If you're in an area where your bandwidth is is iffy at best, then clouds basing everything in the cloud is probably not ideal for you. And then another downside could be considered subscription model software or pay as you go and you know that, that has upsides as we talked about before but it could have downsides too for example if you forget that you have 10 servers running and you're not managing it well that's going to cost your business and if you're not using those that's going to be billed to you monthly regardless so that's something that you have to be aware of and keep an eye on what your company is actually paying for let's talk about service level agreements a service level agreement is a contract that defines the amount of service, reliability, and uptime guaranteed per year. This is usually defined in a number of nines, so if your SLA guaranteed five, five nines, that would mean you would have 99.999% uptime guaranteed to you per year, barring some massive catastrophe. 99.999% um, time would only allow for about five minutes of downtime a year if you broke down the math and for a company like Spotify or Netflix or some company that relies on their online presence to generate revenue if they're down that's a huge loss in cost even if it's just down for a few minutes so these are very important things to read and understand if you use cloud-based solutions so now let's talk about a few vendors, and we'll look at Amazon Web Services website in a minute. But there's many others, even just beyond this list. There's DigitalOcean, 
Google offers cloud-based infrastructure solutions. My, Microsoft offers them in Azure, and there's Microhost and, and a plethora of other vendors. But we're going to talk about Amazon Web Services today and look at their website just a little bit, just to get a feel for kind of the services that are offered. They offer virtual machine hosting, uh, data backup, serverless code execution, um, data services such as databases, and many others. Here's some sources that I've used to, for this presentation. Um, I will have them linked in the description of this video. But now we're going to take a look at Amazon Web Services just to get a feel for what they provide. So you can create an Amazon AWS account for free. You will have to put in a credit card so that if you start making server instances and that type of thing, that you will get bills monthly for that. So just keep that in mind if you start to play around with it. Um, you need to manage what you're doing make sure you don't have servers running that are racking up your bills because they will charge you usually hourly for what you use. So let's let's look at some of the features here. Um, here we have a services button. This shows all the different services that AWS offers. As you can see, it's quite extensive. Um, this in the top right corner you have the regions budget. This shows you like the regions that you can choose for these applications or resources to be available in first and foremost. So if, if, if you're in Canada, you would probably want to choose the Canada region for this. Let's look at some applications. Um, here I have uh, VPC, so let's look at that. VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud, and it allows you to, f to define the networks that your virtual private cloud uses. You can establish access control lists. You can establish firewalls. Um, and all sorts of other networking features. So that's a very useful tool that will be used by many people. Now let's look at EC2. EC2 allows you to actually create servers and run them. It also allows for many other things. You can have images which are basically a copy of a server that's configured a certain way so if you want to run a server that's configured that exact way you can look it up and just start it up. Um, volumes are just you know standalone virtual hard disks that you can store data on. Snapshots are a picture of an image of, of your server at a certain instance so let's say on Monday your server was running fine and then you made some changes Tuesday and you wanted to go back to what your server was like on Monday. If you had a snapshot that you made before you made those changes, you could go back without any major issues. And that would help with your um, resilience and fault tolerance. Uh, here you have networks and security groups. You can also do load balancing. So if your application experiences a high amount of demand and your current server is not capable of providing for that, it can spin up new instances or increase the hardware that's available for that server. So now if we go back uh, and we go to instances, we can go to launch instance to create a server. We can give it a name here. I'll just call it Bob. We can choose an operating system. I'll choose Ubuntu. And you can see here that there's many different tiers available um, for the operating system. And then here under type, this is the hardware resources that you're using. So this version has one gigabyte and one CPU. But if we scroll down, we can choose this one that has 64 gigabytes of memory and 16 CPUs. Now this is going to cost us a dollar and a half an hour versus the small one that was going to cost us a cent an hour. So you can see the pricing increases dramatically and it's something that you need to watch out for and re really think does your budget require this. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Have a good day.